creating insights and putting into the platform and selling that platform another video by mentor me's youtube channel my name is alan arvindan i'm a cfa charter holder and today we'll be talking about the company of tres vista is a premium company i would say uh, by all means not just because of uh, the salary that they pay but also because of the work that they do right now so far in all the videos that i covered apart from crisil uh, most of the companies were platform based services that they were giving right uh, you know creating insights and putting into the platform and selling that platform uh, to fund managers and equity research analysts right so as opposed to that trust vista is basically more of a proper uh, you know outsourced uh, equity research company based out of india providing services to all across uh, the world majorly united states right now in this video what we'll do is we'll cover up the entire tres vista interview process to three sections right so first i'll speak about tres vista's business the role briefs etc then we will get into some questions which are asked now as opposed to the other videos where i was actually showing you questions on uh, tres vista uh, that is pretty similar and hence uh, i am not going to be covering that but i am going to be covering more of the technical face to face questions which are asked in tres vista because frequently what i have seen is most of the candidates tend to uh, you know get rejected in the technical face to face and edge around as well right because the process uh, their their uh, process of filtering out candidates in the technical face to face and the hr face to face is a little more comprehensive than other companies right so and at the end i will give you some suggestions also which you can take up to make sure that you are aligned with the company's vision right so first of all what is tres vista now tres vista provides as you can see in the screen research cfo services now you should know these things about the business because when not just to say in the interview but you also know whether you will fit in the entire structure or not right so so tres vista provides uh, three four kinds of services basically right one is the plain sell side equity research or buy side equity research right second is cfo services because there are a lot of companies which cannot have their own uh, you know chartered accountant and they cannot have their own accounting uh, controller so they can actually outsource this to companies like tres vista which will provide them the cfo kind of services right third is analytics which obviously most of the research companies and kpos have added this as a vertical because uh you know data science and analytics uh you know data gathering all of these aspects have become a regular part of finance right so it's a very natural progression into any company's vertical and then you've got process support which uh, is a late uh, joining in the entire vertical of uh, the tres vista services we don't have to really worry about that much at the moment right now let's talk about so there you go so that's the whole uh, you know if you what to talk about the research this is the entire research so there's no platform based services it is pure research that press vista does and it's a very good place to actually start and even build your career here right now let's look at the job description right so as you can see here since it's a proper equity research position right you can see understanding the needs of investment researchers executing uh, data analysis projects related to the process of understanding markets so this is extensively proper equity research that you have to do right so which also means that the quality of the student has to be very good i am not talking about qualification uh, i am talking about quality in terms of your depth of understanding of things in my experience there have a, there have been a lot of students who got placed in tres vista who had absolutely no background of having a premium uh, you know mba qualification or cfa nothing but they were very uh, you know they had depth they had the right attitude and they had the right commitment because of which they got selected and they and th there's a very less chance that these people tend to leave this company also because uh, it's a good pay master right now so again if you look at the prerequisites you have to be have the ability to understand financial news right uh, since there will be a lot of writing involved so you can see here all the microsoft tools need to be good right verbal and written communication needs to be good because you are going to be talking to clients abroad so they need to understand what you are saying 
and also when you're writing you cannot have grammatical mistakes right uh, attention to detail which is obvious in, in research confidentiality because you're finally working for a client so that data doesn't belong to you it belongs to the client right uh, and obviously reliability and stability because you can't really have a, uh, you know people in this team who is changing you know frequently right because you, you're committed to a project and again you change you have some other plans so it becomes a big problem right so that's the job description okay now let's talk about the interview process so there's an online test the face to face rounds uh, this can be one or two rounds okay majorly i've seen one round but there have also been instances where there are two face to face rounds one will be of technical right uh, and one is of the hr okay and do not consider the hr round to be simpler uh, that is the reason why i been i'll be focusing more on the technical face to face round in this video all right and then of course the selection okay now in the online testing right so uh, it's a it's it's is one of the most difficult uh, i would say test to actually clear okay because it got everything right it's got your aptitude based question it's got also the technical questions right and the technical questions are not easy right so uh, although you might say that okay this is just ratios but those are all application based questions which are asked so it involves data analytics questions so they will give you a set of data you have to interpret it right uh, you know which also involves data interpretation logical reasoning you know and these seating arrangement questions are uh, pretty difficult missing number patterns mostly everybody has done uh, somewhere in their life so if you are not well versed with seating arrangement questions then i would suggest you to actually practice this right then quant based questions right quant based question can be statistics questions probability etc and obviously understanding of income statement balance sheet and cash flow right and that to in depth all right now this is where i'm talking about a technical face to face round now here please understand the objective of the interviewer so he's just not assessing whether you know things okay what he's finally assessing is in my opinion is they're trying to gauge the interest okay because in terms of stress visa they tend to also give you a good pay which also means that the client is also paying you like higher right you cannot pay the analyst a higher amount if the client is not paying you higher amount right which means that you cannot do deep research if the interest is not there there's a difference between that there are a lot of people who do cfa but not all cfa people are actually interested in finance right they're just doing it for the qualification right similarly a lot of chartered accountants there but not everybody is interested in accounting right so that's why you can see here a lot of questions are behavioral based also so for example what were your responsibilities in your internship now think about the amount of people who just do, do internships which is just want to add them in their resume right as opposed to are you doing your internship to actually gain, learn something right what are the difficulties you faced okay now that's a good question because if you have been a person who have always been shielded or have run away from pressure then obviously when you get into research you'll realize that not everything is straightforward right there's no it's not a process based job it's it's it requires creativity and sometimes there are no answers and you have to find out answers from places where you don't know uh, whether there is a clear uh, you know a certainty of getting that information right uh, how much are you interested in finance right so again you here you need to prove okay and first ask yourself but also prove that all that you have done till date okay is for your pursuit to clear the interview at resvista or pursuit to you know get into proper core finance job right uh, for instance if somebody asked me how much are you interested in finance my answer would not be made up it would be a real story because i would say that you know since class 11th i have been reading and following and investing in stocks although i had no i had a very elementary understanding of what the stocks are why the stock prices go up and down but uh, i was searching for it and then i did uh, you know i instead of going into an engineering 
uh, area because I have, was from a science background, but I still got into commerce, having absolutely no clue. Uh, I thought that probably doing commerce will teach me finance, right? But that was not true. So finally, in the final year of my qualification, I got hold of the CFA qualification, right? So CFA, I thought the syllabus was more appropriate. So the reason of choosing CFA was not because I wanted to do CFA. The reason for choosing CFA was because the BCom did not have anything which taught me finance, taught me accounting. Right? So that's how I got into CFA. And when I got the syllabus and it was beautiful and it taught me everything uh, elementary about, you know, financial statements, analysis, research, investments, portfolio management in general. After that, I got into, I was looking for an internship and then I did an internship for stock option companies, right? From stock options companies, I wanted to again get into, not the research side, I wanted to get into the fund side. So I got in touch with my senior and through with him, I started an alternative investment fund. So that's, you understand the linkages between my interest. My interest has not gone. And you can clearly join the dots and try to make out whether the person is interested. That's what I mean by how much are you interested in finance, right? Uh, okay. Then there are obviously technical questions, right? All of these are pretty obvious questions. Uh, and you want to explain this not just in the form of definition, right? So for example, if somebody asks you what is cost of equity, you don't even want to ask, answer you know, it's calculated using CAPM, you know, RF plus beta into RF minus RF. That's not what uh, I would suggest to explain. You need to simplify things because see, at the end, a researcher is a storyteller, right? If you listen to most of the equity research analysts or even investment bankers, you'll see, you'll be hooked because, you know, they can really sell you a story. At the end, you're finally selling a stock, uh, selling an idea. Right? So your way of explanation should be that, you know, cost of equity is nothing but opportunity cost. You know? So for example, if I'm invested in a fixed deposit, then my opportunity cost is 7% or 6%, whatever. If I'm invested in Nifty, then my opportunity cost is about 12-13%. So there are various ways of finding opportunity cost. One is capital. So that's the way to explain cost of equity rather than just explaining uh, the formula. Nobody's asking for the formula. Systematic and unsystematic risk, right? So you can, uh, you can again, give an example, right? For example, uh, you might say that if I hold three stocks, right? So every stock has two kinds of risk. Right? One is the stock specific risk, the company specific risk the company might go bust possible right and the general industry or the economic level risk right so think about it if you have three stocks versus if you have six stocks now in six stocks your stock specific risk is getting divided across six stocks whereas in the first case your risk is divided only across three stocks so according to the portfolio management theory as you keep on adding stocks, right? And possibly even from different, different industries, right? So for example, one stock is from pharma, one is from IT, one is from, let's say manufacturing, one is from energy, then your disk risk, you know, gets diversified. But the industry specific risk cannot be diversified, right? So that is how you should be exploring that. Organic and inorganic growth, again, Organic means that the person is actually, the customer is actually coming to you without you spending, you know, too much, uh, you know, tactics of finance to increase your customer base. An example would be that, you know, when we are saying organic, for example, uh, let's say uh, we are talking about Mariko. Okay. Now, let's say there is a new industry. So they are into the oil business, right? parachute oil let's say now organic would be that the demand for parachute oil is i mean company is trying to grow its demand by 20 percent every year regular but what if there is another oil company which makes parachute right let's say the company's name is abc 
inorganic would be to acquire the business of abc and there you go so your inorganic growth is available right so as an analyst you always always trying to look for okay acquisitions are good but is the company only trying to do acquisitions to increase its revenue many companies are there which trying to do that right non controllable interest right so what is so this you will have to actually read uh, you know the financial statement analysis and under, understand what is non controllable interest and also try to understand at the same place what is minority interest okay then there are questions related to ratios right so what is changes in working capital this is to test your understanding of interlinkages between financial statements right so don't just don't just say that working capital is current assets minus current liability understand working capital in the real sense what is really working capital right because there are you know for example if you talk about asian paints right so asian paints uh inventory you know whatever there is in their 75000 distributors their inventory tends to get changed in every 3 hours right as opposed to to put any other paint company right even burger does well but we we'll talk about any other company takes somewhere between 1 days to 3 day for the inventory to churn now think about this if your inventory is getting churned in every 3 hours what do you think is going to happen to the working capital right that means your receivables or receivable days is going to be lower right now obviously payable can be higher or lower right but if the payables is higher and the receivable days is lower then your working capital is rocking right so that is actually the real definition of working capital right so that is how you need to understand things right what are the three important financial statements and how they are linked now here you should know uh, you know the various line items of the income statement and which part of the balance sheet gets linked majorly uh, it's the income statement and balance sheet linkages which are important the cash flow statement finally is just a reconcil recon statement right? reconciliation statement so you have to try out making a income statement balance sheet and cash flow physically or i mean in the in a spreadsheet and then try it out and understand what effect what a simple question could be here that if let's say your depreciation was charged as let's say 100 but it was supposed to be charged as 120 tell me the effects of in the three statements right so that's a little bit of technical question so you need to be thorough with your preparation for technical line. now hr do not try to think that the hr round is okay you cleared a technical round you are through here questions related to commitment will be asked okay uh, relocation etc right so be sure to first first tell the truth and also make up in your mind that if you are getting into this position that means you cannot do too many other things right you cannot be uh, of course if you can study this fine but you cannot take breaks you cannot come to the management and say that no i am i want to prep leap for 15 20 days not going to happen right uh, because you know they are also committed to their clients so they cannot tell the client that you know my analyst is giving an exam so all those reasons are the reasons why the hr questions will be very very clear in terms of commitment so first of all my advice is to actually think about your commitment and second is to think about Uh, explaining it well so that you don't confuse okay and uh, that brings us to the end of this video of stress vista interview preparation i hope you like this video and uh, i've tried to summarize as much as possible and i'll come up with another video in the next week uh, if you like the video please like it subscribe it share it with the friends who actually uh, would want to do such preparation and i'll see you next week bye bye